One of the fun things about working with a good video editor and footage you care about is that the editing the video can become as much of a hobby as the source of the video itself. Your RC hobby can transform itself into another satisfying video editing hobby you can spend time doing when you can't fly your models or when you're not recording at the ball diamond or the sports field. As we've seen in the earlier videos, this doesn't need to cost a lot or break the family budget. Once you get past the basics of your video editing software, I'll bet you start looking at various commercials, TV shows, YouTube videos, and other projects differently. I often find myself thinking about how I could accomplish this or that effect or transition with the tools I have, which don't include Adobe Creative Suite of excellent professional but kind of pricey tools. Since my artistic creativity quotient is fairly low, I try to make up for it by increasing my observations to see what I can learn and perhaps duplicate to achieve a cool effect. Here are a couple of tips to help you end up with a more professional video. First, don't go overboard with the digital transitions. Paid programs can have hundreds of them. You shouldn't try to use them all. In fact, many are just distracting. For most of your transitions from one scene to the next, the right answer is a cut. Nothing fancy, just one clip ends and the other starts. Notice how many cuts there are in professional productions. No need for stars or wipes or flying airplanes. Pick transitions related to the story. I'll sometimes use a clock wipe transition when my script says I'm going to do something and then come back. The transition supports the idea of time passing. That flying airplane transition might work if the end of the scene is you getting on an airplane and the next scene is you getting off. The transition supports the story. The film school graduate will likely say that this is a bit too Batman from the old TV series, but it can work if you're having fun telling the story. Besides a straight cut, many editors make it easy to do what's called a dissolve or a crossfade. In these transition, the following scene fades in while the preceding scene fades out. The result is a few frames where images from both scenes are visible. These transitions work well when linking photos as in a slideshow. They also could work when linking shots of your kid's soccer game. They can give a sense of time passing. A straight fade is often used to signal a change in scene that may include a change in time or location. Fades are when the closing scene fades to black and the opening of the next scene fades from black. The fully black screen usually only lasts a couple of frames before the fade-in begins. Since this is a more noticeable transition, it should signify a bigger shift in the story. Wipes are another way to signal a change in location. Your editing software will likely have several wipes for you to choose from. When you start looking at transitions on TV or in movies, you'll sometimes notice that wipes are accompanied by sound effects. The sound effect corresponds to the length of the wipe and calls attention to the transition. Speaking of sound, audio can be an important part of your transition. Once you start looking at other productions for their production techniques, in addition to the stories they tell, you'll notice a common technique is to lead with the audio from the following scene before ending the video from the previous one. This can happen when a conversation starts in the next scene while a location shot continues from the previous scene. This causes the viewer's ears to lead them into the next scene before their eyes follow along. For example, you might lead with the audio of a model aircraft taxiing out for takeoff before cutting away from a close-up photograph of the model. In a sports setting, you might keep running a few seconds of the kids walking toward the coach's huddle before cutting in to the coach's remarks. 
These cuts are called audio or video advance cuts. An audio advance occurs when the sound leads the transition. A video advance occurs when the video leads the transition while the preceding audio continues to play. Another one of the cuts you've probably noticed is called a jump cut. These occur when the background stays static, but the actor or actors abruptly move to different locations within the frame. When planned, these are used to show the passage of time. Think time-lapse photography. When these are not good, however, is when they occur when editing multiple takes to eliminate narration errors. The result is a static background, but there is a noticeable jump where the actor's position changes just slightly. Here is an example of an undesirable jump cut that I've edited into this video. Most of the time, multiple jump cuts of this type are distracting and negatively impacts your viewer's opinion of your work. Fortunately, there are several fairly easy ways to eliminate unintended jump cuts. One way is to use two cameras when shooting a longer monologue. Even a smartphone camera will work here. By positioning the camera at a different angle, you can shift the point of view at the point of the potential jump cut. Then the movement will be large enough for you to look purposeful. You can use approximately the same angle, but set the zoom much closer to on the second camera. In this case, you'll cut to a zoomed position or a zoomed version of the actor, again, making the move look planned. Depending on your video editor, you can also accomplish this within the editor using digital effects. Many editors will have a zoom function for video, allowing you to zoom the clip, causing the jump cut to again seem purposeful. Another way to hide a jump cut is to do a cutaway. By this I mean leave the main video track running with the jump cut in place, but overlay the visual part of the video with a photo or related video segment, which displays or plays while the narration continues. Obviously, you'd mute the other video segment. The best way to deal with jump cuts is to just avoid them by backing up and shooting retakes. It's tempting to just back up a couple of sentences and continue with the camera rolling, figuring you'll be able to fix it while editing. That's true to a point, but you'll be in a fix when you realize that the jump cuts come every few seconds and you're already taken down your set or no longer have access to the location. A do-it-yourself teleprompter, as I mentioned in one of the other videos in this series, can also help. By blocking the shots to correspond to natural breaks in the script, you can get clear takes and reset the shot with either a different zoom or a different angle, avoiding jump cuts altogether. Editing becomes fairly easy, as you can do your audio matching if you used a separate audio recorder, cut the scene intro verbiage and slate clap, and then just do straight cuts from scene to scene. Again, this discussion on jump cuts is important because they are so visually powerful. At the same time, it doesn't apply as much to scenes where there is no actor on the camera. This brings us to another related topic. If you aren't very good at speaking into the camera, consider planning your video story around a voiceover. In this case, be sure to shoot plenty of related action or photos that you can run while overlaying brief descriptions or other sound bites recorded and edited separately. In this way, the video stays smooth or uses some of the other video transitions we've discussed while there is no person on camera to jump around. This will likely require you to use one of the paid video editors discussed in the video and audio editing software video. The last thing I want to mention regarding editing your video is the use of music. Music can add a lot to a video. It doesn't have to be playing all the time, but there will be scenes where music can add a nice touch. Most video editors will allow you to add music in a variety of different file formats. Even free editors will allow the addition of a music track. 
One of the neat features of Pinnacle Studio is that it includes a music generation module. It will make a custom track to any length you specify based on one of the dozens of themes arranged in several genres. Another choice is using royalty-free music, available on a number of sites on the internet. In some cases, they require you to credit their site or the song and author in the closing credits of your video. YouTube itself has a large number of songs that you can again use for free. Again, some require attribution. Others demand a license fee if your project is commercial, that is, you're being paid to produce it or are producing it for your business. The license fees normally don't apply if your only payment is YouTube monetization. YouTube allows electronic crawlers to examine music used in videos and to flag videos believed to be using copyrighted materials. If flagged, YouTube can suspend monetization and could further sanction blatant copyright offenders. With all the royalty-free music available, there's really no point in using music you don't have rights to on any video you post online. Okay, you know the drill. Please click the thumbs up icon if you found this video helpful. Also, be sure to subscribe to the RC Plain Views channel to be notified when I post new videos. I know you're going to be happy when someone tells you that your videos are so professional. Take a bow and smile appreciatively. You deserve it.